Um, today, it is my great pleasure to introduce Neha Patel for a technical masterclass on the making of Penny Maker. Uh, just one second, present. Oh, it's not on the screen yet. Oh, wait. Oh, yay, it's there. Yay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Neha, and I will be presenting an audio deep dive technical thingy about Mini Maker. Make a thing. So, um, hi, my name is Neha. You know that, though. Um, I am a freelance composer sound designer from Quebec City. Uh, currently, aside from Minimaker, I am working on Venba, which is a cooking narrative game about an Indian mother uh, immigrating to Canada in the 80s. It is not based off of my mom, but weird coincidence, and I was like, hell yeah, I'm doing this. Uh, and then um, some games for the playdate, uh, most notably Lost Your Marbles, which came out on season one. Uh, Eternites, which is a Persona-style hack-and-slash game that was presented at the last um, PlayStation State of Play and Spleen, which is a 2D action RPG Persona style game that's very early in its development and it's all hand painted, so it's really gorgeous. Um, if I ever don't get a chance to answer some questions, please uh, feel free to contact me via Twitter. Uh, this, here are some socials. Um, so yeah, so today we will be going over the pre-production of Minimaker, the sound design, the VO, and of course, the music. But before I go on to the technical side of things, I want to give a little bit of background about how this project started, how I jumped onto it, because I think it'll help make, um, it'll help like understand why I made certain decisions. Um, so here's a little bit about me. Uh, I am a classical, pian classical pianist at heart. Um, I finished my undergrad in 2018 in piano, and funny thing is, I started piano lessons because of video games. So um, this one here, my little uh, FF7 piano collection, uh, that was basically like my holy bible uh, growing up. Uh, we didn't have a printer, or rather it broke, so I would like, and we didn't have sheet paper, so I would take regular paper, draw lines, and then like write the notes and try to go practice it. Um, so video game is what led me to beg my parents for piano lessons. And I finally got them uh, after getting hit by a car, actually. But <laughs> it happened and I got those damn lessons. Uh, that, <laughs> that also led to me like discovering classical music because it's not something I grew up with. So all the Russians are Rachmaninoff, Shostakovich, Beethoven, uh, well, not Russian, but anyways, all of my favorites. Uh, I got to play a lot of that and um, I wanted I always wanted to write for video games, but because I didn't have that musical upbringing that I wanted, I also insisted on studying classical piano in my undergrad. Um, so while doing that, I also wrote a lot of video game arrangements because it just made sense. You play video game music and you start arranging stuff because it's too hard, it's too simple, you want to make it your own. Uh, one of my recent releases, the one I love the most, is uh, Chocobo on Thanksgiving Dinner. <laughs> I did this during my undergrad, uh, it's for string quartets, and the reason behind it was just, well, Chocobo theme is happy, I'm sad, let's make it sad. Um, <laughs> and like, why not change up your bird for dinner once in a while, right? Um, so, sorry, I have morbid humor. Um, <laughs> here we are. Uh, so that's my background. Um, I finished my undergrad in 2018, and then right after I started a master's in composition for screen. And I was super excited, because this was my first time having like legit orchestration classes, real composition classes. But then life happens, and it was a two-year program. I finished my first year, and I suddenly had to quit. Um, and I was completely unprepared. I thought I had a whole year left to make a really solid reel, a portfolio, like just get something together. And here I am in the summer of 2019 with nothing. Uh, and I need to get started in the real life and the workforce, right? Um, luckily that year, I spent a lot of time doing game jams. 
probably a jam a month at least. Um, not that I recommend it, but that's something I did. So in turn, that did help me out in the sense that uh, it was my way to practice sound design because I had never done that in a formal setting and I still haven't been to school for sound design. Um, but the game jamming made me learn how to work quick, how to work efficiently and just do a lot of stuff that I could kind of put together into a reel, put together into an example of like, hey, it's not great, but I did, I did do something. Um, so I did a lot of that. And back then I was, so right now I live in Quebec City. But back then, I was, I was born and raised in Montreal. That means that I'm in a game city hub. Um, so everything was easy to access. Um, there were a lot of communities. There's a great uh, game audio community, actually. Um, so I got involved quite a bit. And that led to me making some amazing friends. Uh, one of them, uh, Max, was the one who recommended me for this project because he knew the members of the team. So I landed this gig through a friend referring me to uh, the awesome team. And uh, I did a couple of interviews and we jammed. So this is the awesome Casarara team based in Montreal. Uh, we were already actually kind of like semi-hybrid by the time I started. So I uh, started with Casa in October of 2019. And by then I had moved to Quebec City. Um, and half of the team is fully remote. I mean, uh, both of our programmers in the middle and the middle right, one's in France, one's uh, 16 hours away in a village. Um, so we're a bit everywhere. So even before the pandemic, we knew how to work uh, in this remote hybrid form. Um, and this team is a group of veterans. So I was in very good hands. The only newbies was myself and Sid, uh, upper left corner, who is our amazing community manager. We were the newbies in the team, but we were in good hands. Um, so Minimaker was Casa Rara's first commercial IP. Um, we are a big bunch of lover of arts, but something that was common with all of us, despite our age differences and experience and everything, uh, is that we are a group of recovering perfectionists. <laughs> so. <laughs> Mini Maker um, was basically meant for us. Uh, the development of the game started in October 2019. Uh, so something that was really cool that the team did with me was not to embark me on the full project right away, but rather I, I was given a three-month contract for the prototype uh, to see if, hey, does everything work? And I think that's a great initiative from the studio of like not lowballing me or anything, but just saying like, here's a small amount of work you can do. Let's see how it goes. And well, it went really well. Um, so yeah, we had three months to make a prototype and uh, we showcased it at the Montreal Demo Night in January 2019. So this is what it looked like three months in. Oops, wait, no, the links are there. I am sorry, give me a second. Oh wait, is this not working good. for you? I'm feeling like uh, adding a touch of gold. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. It's oh, the whole factory. <laughs> is this keyboard? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm you really made it happen. Like... <laughs> made it oh my happen. god! I'm feeling like uh, adding a touch of gold. <laughs> so yeah, what do you think? About I love it. Um, we love gold and everything. Oh my god, I'm tired. a detail in this. Oh. <laughs> Person could definitely I love sometimes, you know, how the gameplay can just and be. And we have for 30 itself. seconds left. So, <laughs> finish amazing. your, your thing. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to <laughs> say that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Pax next. So, uh, this was Mini Maker three months in. Um, sorry, I'm going to go back to. Da, 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 da. So then, now you might be wondering, well, like, what the hell is Minimaker, right? So <laughs> it's a bigger building sandbox game. Uh, the perk when I said that it's a, it's a game for recovering perfectionists is that there's no undo button. 
what you did is what you get. <laughs> so if you're a perfectionist, it's your worst nightmare. And visually, it looks like Bob Ross met like Rose Lango in 3D and made a baby. Um, so here is what the game looked like. We shipped uh, end of May, beginning June of 2022. So it's been uh, three, four months now. Um, so this is the... All beginner DJs want to know what DJ controller they should get. It's the second time. Howdy, and welcome to Mini Maker Make a Thing. I'm Sid, one of the developers at Casa Rara Studio, and I'm excited to tell you all about our kooky creative workshop simulator. Your job is to make unusual things for your adorable clients in the wondrous Mini Maker Workshop, filled with creative restrictions and a dash of chaos. Making things is easy. Pick as many pieces as you want from the junk drawer and glue them together. Switch to paint mode to add colors and cool tattoos using a variety of tools before unlocking wow mode, where you grab capsules from our gotcha machine to accessorize your thing. There's no undo button, so just keep building until you proclaim your thing as good enough. And voila! Show your new thing to the minis and be judged. But look out, there are some sinister baddies trying to sabotage your creation or give you inspiration for new designs. And you'll have to be sharp to collect money for sick new goods, keys that unlock new workshop modes, and challenge cards to customize your challenge. As you progress, you'll unlock more cards, workshop upgrades, and piece types. With four wacky worlds, over 60 crazy client projects, and a massive variety of tools, you'll have tons of hours of gameplay and endless replayability. And that's it. There's no wrong way to make a mini maker. We find it's best suited for makers who are ready to throw out expectations and embrace the bizarre. If that sounds fun to you, then wishlist mini maker make a thing today. So that was mini maker. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, pre production. Um, so I started on this project and I was given the tasks of everything. So, uh, you're an audio director, you're composing, sound design, implementation, yay. Uh, <laughs> but like, it was innocent times. I, I didn't know what a Jira was. They had to explain that to me. Uh, sprint, stand-ups, like these were all terms I kind of heard about, but Jira was the big one. I was like, oh my God, this is something. Um, so yeah, uh, we. I'm grateful with the team that we had a decent amount of time to just talk it out and have a decent pre-production. Uh, so we made like a soundboard mood board thing and right off the bat, um, Ruben, our creative director, had told me that he wanted a synthy lo-fi-esque vibe. Um, some improv-like parade music, so think almost like folk music, just fun, lively. Something we had to stray away from was childlike music. Uh, that was a big no-no. And then I had pitched uh, at the beginning, hey, what if we did some musical sound effects? So like the sound design is actual just notes and it'll match to the music and it'll be cool. Um, fun fact, I said yes to all this. I had basically never used synths. Uh, so I was freaking out. Uh, <laughs> I, I said yes in the sense that at least folk and parade-like stuff felt, um, felt comfortable to me. Uh, I love folk music, uh, but my background is more classical, more orchestral. Uh, so I had never really used since other than maybe a couple of game jams where I downloaded a free VST and was like, boop, boop, boop. Um, but this time I was, oh, great. Um, so I'll get more into the details a little bit later about that. So um, in terms of the sound design, this is one of the first references that was given to me. Okay, am I going to do this well? Yes, I did it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so this was one of the first ref references that was given to me by the team, and it spoke to me a lot. I wouldn't watch the full video. I've watched the video like on loop. <laughs> I really like it. And it says everything like this 
person is just painting yellow paint in different shades and like screaming their asses out, right? And but like emotionally, and I feel like it says something. And I add, I actually thought it was inspirational. Um, no joke. Um, maybe that says something about me, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of my first references. Um, and so straight off the bat, it was like, okay, Mini Maker is unhinged, wacky, unrealistic, just like the video. Um, something we wanted to try uh, was to have this Japanese anime aesthetic think Dragon Ball sounds. Um, and then we also wanted the sounds to be satisfying, almost ASMR-ish, so I call that yummy nummy. And then uh, musical, like I had pitched before, of like, hey, what if we just tuned the sound design to the music? The thing with how this all came to be was that not every sound effect could have been musical because it was just overwhelming. So that's when the yummy nummy sound effects came in and then we were like, no, let's try something weirder. So let's try for some anime-esque sounds. Um, so in the end, the sound design was a whole mishmash of these three flavors. So now, um, I was like, cool, I'm gonna like do Dragon Ball-esque like, sound design, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna look up for sound bags and see if there's something. There's nothing. Um, <laughs> it doesn't exist. I had heard, and I'm not sure how legit this information is, but that um, anime studios have their own sound design banks, like they're like not online, but like physical hard drives, and they're passed around to studios, and that's why we don't have access to them. So I did the next best thing, and that was to YouTube it. Uh, back in 2019, there was exactly one video on how to make anime sounds. Um, and although it wasn't exactly what I wanted, uh, it gave me a really good base for me to tweak it and make it my own, almost. So what is this secret formula? And this is based off the YouTube video. I did not invent this. Um, pitch up, so a string-like sound that's long works best. So like think about um, scratching a violin string or guitar string, uh, lots of reverb, and then use a frequency shifter. Uh, I basically used free plugins for all of this. Pitch up, I used Reaper, so the repitch uh, built-in pitch thingy. Uh, reverb, I think I used sound toys for that one, little, pay, little plate, so that's paid, but I mean, you could use any reverb, honestly. And for the frequency shifter, I used the Valhalla Frequency Echo, I think it's called. Again, if you just write Valhalla Frequency Shifter, you'll find it. It is free, and it was a great tool. Um, so that was my like base recipe, and then the amount of what I did, did changed depending on the sound. Um, so this is the first example. No, we're not there anymore. We're here, sorry. <laughs> um, so in this sound, the original sound is just a typical uh, sound bank sound of like a magic thing, a uh, magic attack. Uh, so we'll listen to that first. So that's the original from the sound bank. And this is gonna be the final version. So I looped it too. That's with nothing. So here's the recipe. Uh, pitched it up. Little plate. This I just did whatever I felt right. And I wanted to cut up some frequencies I didn't like at the end. And yeah, that was the original again. Uh, so that's example number one. And I have a, another example. Uh, again, same, same formula. Here in this sound, the original is just a bunch of sword sounds. Actually, we'll hear them. So, uh, so this is the final version. I'll play that again. It was fast. This is going to be with nothing. Sword, like, unleashing. Shimmer sound. That's the original.
So yeah, it was the exact same recipe of like uh, pitch it up, reverb, and then tweak to your taste. Oh, what's no? Okay. So, um, oh no, I had one more example. I am sorry. I will go back. Oh, so yeah, these are some um, examples in game. Uh, the first example that I'll show is, oh, it's um, one of the tools that you use on the figurine. Um, we'll wait, I'm like playing through the game, but um, when you buy a piece pack, I'll go to the shop soon and then um, you'll hear the... There we go. So yeah, that's uh, anime-esque a la Mini Maker. Um... Oh, thank you. So the other component I wanted <laughs> was uh, satisfying sounds. I wanted the player and myself to like have this reaction, right? Um, so I'm like, huh, how do I do this? And after some experimentation, I felt like the answer was kind of simple where I would just use raw -er sounds and then process them. I didn't want, uh, I felt like pre-processed sounds or stuff that was already like very sci-fi-esque or overdone was not working. Raw -er sounds like vegetable cutting, tomato squeezing, uh, spongy sounds. And uh, I hate saying this, but I listened to a lot of fart sounds for the, it was horrible. Like I will not do this and like toilet flushing and like Terrible, terrible sounds. But Mini Maker has a lot of that actually. Uh, and it worked great. So, using those raw earth sounds and like just layering that helped uh, a crap ton. I felt like it, it felt more ASMR ish because I guess it was more natural. Um, but nothing complicated here. It was just a lot of layering and a lot of real esque sounds. Um, so, we will jump to the examples. So uh, the first one is gonna be a paint, like when you grab, when you touch the paint thingy. That's sticker. That's like water and paint. That's a balloon. So yeah, that's our yummy nummies. <laughs> oh, they're all so kind. Ah, so next up, uh, I had pitched early on that I wanted to do musical SFX. That means I would use actual instruments and then the sounds of the instruments would be the sound design. But something that was really important from the get-go for me was to tune those to the soundtrack. Uh, so if I recall correctly, the entire soundtrack is an F. I did not change keys. I kept it very simple. Um, so all of the musical SFX would be either F, A, or C. Um, so that it would always be in tune. And it worked most of the time, I would say. Um, so that's that. And yeah, initially I started the project with like only musical stuff. And then I realized, okay, that's a bit too much. And that's when I added other types of sounds. So here are our musical sound effects. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Uh, in this example, it's like equipping a card or unequipping a card. And the thing is you get more bonus points when you equip the card. So we want to encourage the player to use the cards. So uh, when I'm equipping, it's a musical effects, uh, SFX that's like positive and like not so dissonant. But when you remove it, there's a dissonant sound. So my way was to guilt trip the player into <laughs> equipping the cards. Thank <laughs> you. 
In this example, it'll be when you grab the coins, the keys, and the money stuff, you'll get like musical sounds. These are all musical notes. So that's that for musical SFX. And then, oh, the big one, BO. Um, so like I said, I, Mini Maker was my first project. I was a complete newbie. Uh, it was my first commercial, you know, big thing. And I was thrown into this big role, which I'm very grateful for. A uh, huge learning experience. But VO is something I did basically none of. So there was a big learning curve of expectations versus the reality. Um, so initially, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do a unique voice per character. So those minis, those are like little characters. And at the beginning of the game, there was like, I think uh, Cooper is the main boss. So there was Cooper and maybe three other characters. And that's all there was. So I was like, yeah, that's doable. I'm going to have different emotions and they're going to speak gibberish and it's going to be great. Uh, well, no, because there were a lot more characters and turns out that Having to record different dialogue for every emotion, for every character, just multiplies the work exponentially. And I didn't realize that, but then I did realize, and I was like, okay, I, I can't do this. So then my next thought was like, you know what? I'm going to do this Animal Crossing style. I'm going to record like every syllable and then like make a little language out of it and like, like granulate it and put it together and randomize it. That was a horrible idea. It was even worse than the first because it was so much more work. I, I could not do it. It was beyond the scope. So now you're probably wondering, okay, so like, you know, what did you do, right? I used and reused. A lot of the VO in the game is placeholder that I just reused, uh, pitched it up, stretched it, uh, cut it up differently. But VO is somewhere where I learned to scope down quite a bit and to say good enough. Uh, so Mini Maker's original title was actually Mini Maker Good Enough. And <laughs> that's a motto that um, our creative director instilled in me too. And I'm really grateful for that because I could have maybe just never ended here. And um, I learned that it was actually okay to use and reuse. I don't need to have distinct lines for everything. And then the player experience was not really going to change that much. Um, so I had maybe 10, 20 lines, and I just took those as a base and re reworked them. Um, so in Minimaker, there's the characters that have voices, but a lot of the distractions too. The distractions are the little things that come and like ruin your beautiful figurine. Um, so yeah, they're called baddies or distractions. And initially, we only had a couple distractions, so they all had their unique voices. Um, there was a voice for when they appear, when you kill them, and when they manage to like hit your creation and they just go away. Um, one of the first characters was the hammer. So all, you know, he appears and goes, hammer, and then he hits your creation and he goes, hammer, ham. But if you kill him, it goes, no, or <laughs> this, um, this other little weed figurine, um, like, He's just crying when you kill him, because I was like, yeah, guilt trip. Um, so I had a lot of characters initially. And then again, um, the amount of distractions uh, increased exponentially, and I couldn't keep up. So what I did was I reused a lot, and I ended up using a lot of sound design or just reusing assets that were not VO um, to just play, place it together. So this is, um, this is the final boss when everything happens all at once and it's a hot mess, but I wanted to show it because, well, that's, that's Mini Maker. Ha ha ha! 
So yeah, that was the final bit of mishmash of everything together. And now the best part, the music. Um, this was really fun to do. Um, I'm just gonna get this together. So uh, as I said, uh, our creative director really wanted a synthy lo-fi sound and he was a big, big fan of Wilmot's Warehouse. So I actually contacted the composer, uh, Ellie Rainsbury, and they were super helpful. I was like, I am doing this synth thing, I don't know, like I just started with Massive and I, I don't know where I'm going. And they took the time to talk with me and explain what they did for uh, Wilmot's Warehouse. So that was a huge, huge help. Um, after that, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I just tweaked and I tried to find the palette of what I wanted uh, with the synths. For the lo-fi part, um, cheap trick that worked really well, but it's to use a, a narrow band pass and you just cut off a bunch of frequency from the lower and the high and you just get that like radio-esque sound. And that was perfect for the game. Uh, so we used a lot of that. Um, the music is also very improv-like at times because again, we wanted that parade-esque feel. Um, initially, I pitched uh, interactive music, and this is knowing that we weren't going to use middleware, so I, I don't know what I was thinking, because this is, again, new Bineha, right? I was like, I love Wise, we're not using Wise, oh dear. <laughs> um, so my workaround was that, oh, I'm just going to write like three music per big level, right? So level one would be the theme, but very um, sparse, and you could barely hear the melody. Then level two, it's gonna be a bit more together, and then level three, when you're at the end of the, end of the thing, you'll hear the whole soundtrack, yeah, oh, the whole piece, yay. And that worked okay when there was like three levels, not when there were 60. Um, <laughs> so I quickly learned that my idea was not the interactive thing was just scratched out because of the way the game grew and my, yeah, it just did not work. Um, but what I did learn with the music was using reusable melodies. Um, so as the game grew, we realized we needed ambiences. But I, and ambiences for me were much quicker to do because they were quite simple in their demands with what they wanted, like a beach sound or a coffee shop. Um, but then I was like, well, I have all this music. What if, what if I did something with the ambience and the music? Um, so then that brings us, do, 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 do. okay, that brings us here. Um, so I will, so what I did was that I would write an ambience and then use a theme I had already written and sparse it out in the ambience. So it kind of gave me like, two extra pieces, like I had the ambience by itself, cool, but then I also had a musical ambience. So we will take a look at that. So this is the zero gravity theme, it's one of the pieces. So that's that. <laughs> oh. And then there's the coffee shop theme where I made the ambience first and then I used the theme from Zero Gravity and just sparsed it out. So that was that I, so I did that for a lot of the ambiences um, and it worked out great. So um, the results, we ab abandoned a lot. Uh, interactive music, even the fake one was out the window. The Animal Crossing view, nah, -uh. uh, unique view per character, 
Nope. Well, basically a lot of the VO was scratched out. Uh, and then we wanted more music. We just wanted more content. I, like on the sound design road, I wanted a lot more unique sound design. But then I realized that, you know what? Quality over quantity. We don't need something different for every single sound all the time. And perhaps no one would even realize it. So why not make something better but less and then reuse it? There's no shame in that. I'm a big recycling fan now. <laughs> And so, but we kept uh, the fun, almost improv-like music, uh, musically tuned SFX, that, that worked great, the anime-ish, synthy lo-fi, and a bonus discovery were, was that the ambiences could be musical too, so that's like extra music for the soundtrack. So, in retrospect, I was slash am a newbie, it's been three years. Um, and as any newbie does, uh, the scope was way too big. That I, and it's a scope that I put onto myself. It wasn't asked by me, it's just stuff that I wanted to do. And I treated myself pretty harshly when I couldn't do it, but it's actually okay, it was good enough. Um, I learned to not shy away from reusing sounds. It's okay, and especially in a game like Mini Maker, there's so much happening at the same time that it, it works out. Uh, I learned a lot about organization. Um, my Excel sheets were a mess, they maybe still are, but <laughs> I'm learning that, hey, maybe everyone should know the event names and like share that properly and everything. And another big thing was communication. Um, so everyone in the team was very experienced, so I guess I felt intimidated. Uh, I was scared to ask for what I needed, and it's not like they were mean or anything. They were actually really, really nice all the time. Uh, it's just that, so, for someone like me, this was a big task, and I felt like I wasn't ready for the game, but I, I was, and it's okay, and people are there to help you, um, so I would shy away less next time. And yeah, so like the big learning curve for me with Mini Maker was that oftentimes your work is good enough, and that's all you need. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't push harder, but that you're already pushing hard, and it's probably already really good. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, this was Mini Maker Make a Thing. Uh, here are my socials, and thank you for coming. Um, thank you so much. We have, uh, again, some really great questions from the audience. So do you want to yes, sit and just like of course. answer a few? Um, but first I have one from me. You used the phrase tweak to your taste when you were talking about sound, designing a sound earlier. You also mentioned that you were kind of the sole audio person mm -hmm. on Mini Maker. It was your first game project. How do you know when uh, you've got enough tweak? When you've tweaked enough, how much tweak is too much tweak? And how do you kind of sense check those decisions, <laughs> um, particularly when you're young or fresh to mm -hmm. games? I guess there's like two answers, a professional one and the I'm gonna be a real one. Mm. Uh, I think <laughs> I'll stick with I'm gonna be a real one. Oftentimes I was just too tired. Mm. Like I, I was exhausted, like I'm, or I just cried a whole ton. Um, <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe it is good enough. And um, I mean, ask for feedback was the professional answer. Um, sometimes like I felt like my ears were tired. So I would just be like, somebody listen to this and let me know. Um, this is a great one from uh, the audience, with so many strange and cool sounds, how did you communicate verbally what was needed with your team? How did I communicate verbally with... Um, I sent a lot of examples, mm. just a lot of audio examples. Uh, I would do mock-up things, I would uh, show reference videos, but uh, yeah, I would try to like... I also learned how to speak their language, um, so they're not from an audio background at all. So during pre-pro, like, I kind of just Maybe they didn't realize this, but I took the time to understand, okay, what are they saying to describe the music? Oh, okay, they're using these words. It's not the right words at all, mm -hmm. musically, but that's their language. And I think I do that with every team now, where it's like I try to understand their language and then integrate it into mine. So I, I know that we're communicating in the same fake musical language. <laughs> um, was that kind of a tricky transition coming from a classical music background? Uh, not too bad. It wasn't that bad because... Um, yeah, I just spent a lot of time studying and uh, playing around. And after the initial like fear and like bump, it was smooth sailing. Um, 
That's amazing. <laughs> I feel like you make it look very easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was a lot of work with YouTube videos and a lot of tutorials and there was a lot of research. Like there was work done in the back end. Yeah. Yep. Other kind of YouTube tutorials or guides of other kinds that you'd recommend for people getting oh, started? Oh, uh, fresh out the bed, like, like that, I can't remember which YouTube videos I did. Uh, the ones that are less showy and less like, look at my studio, this is, you know, like I really don't like those. Um, so yeah, it was just, yeah. And, and maybe contacting a composer you like. So Ellie was a big help. Um, Mina, lovely Mina in the front row, asks, could you go into a little more detail about how you skilled yourself up in working with synths and how long did that process take you? Um, so it was an ongoing process throughout the project, I'd say. Uh, the first, first, first theme I wrote was the like the opening thing when you open the game, and that's less synthy. So it gave me the time to write something more parade esque, less synth, and just learn that on my own. Um, the game jams helped a lot. Um, so even while doing Mini Maker, I think I was doing a game jam or two. You know, this was right before the pandemic. Um, but yeah, it was just YouTube videos and it was just a lot of work. And I didn't have that much work to begin with. It was, Mini Maker at some point was my only project and I was working side jobs. So um, it gave me enough time to just research. Uh, you mentioned that a lot of anime sound banks, banks are inaccessible. So there's a question here, where did you source sound banks? Uh, for like which sounds? Like no, because the anime ones, I don't have a sound bank. Um, where I source sounds, uh, I use, um, what's it called? Uh, sound the library, not boom. Uh, Soundly, thank you. I'm having, I'm very jet lagged. <laughs> uh, so Soundly, I use a crap ton of that. Um, sound Morph, and I think those are the two. There's the GDC bundle that they um, give away every year. And um, there's, there's like a crap ton of sounds on that. So a lot of free gear, that, um, free sounds that I would uh, download. Were there any technical or creative sound effects challenges uh, given the kind of modular, unpredictable nature of this game? Yeah, um, a lot of timing issues. There's like a sound where you level up that I just could not, it was like at the end of the project and I just could not figure it out. But a lot of just try and retries. But uh, I felt like some of the more tangible sounds were kind of more difficult than the weird abstract ones. Interesting. Do you have like a kind of specific example? Uh, so yeah, the, the, the level up sounds like a cranky sound and you could like it's looping. So you see the things so I have to match it. Mm -hmm. And I just had a lot of trouble with it because again, no middleware or anything. So it's just visually trying to guess and yeah. Um, maybe I think this is a nice one uh, because I think it ties into the kind of good enough theme really well. Um, an audience member asks, when you were a newbie, how did you deal with anxiety and second guessing about kind of committing to a big project like Mini Maker? Oh my God, all the time. Like there was this one instance, I think it was a couple of months in where I broke down and I thought like, um, I think I was telling a friend, I, I think I should send a resignation letter or something. And this is unprompted, nothing happened with the team. I was just having a mental breakdown of, I am not good enough for Mini Maker. Um, for me, it was just surrounding myself with good people. And I was really lucky that I've had a solid group of friends. The audio community, again, in Montreal or Quebec in general is very tight, mm -hmm. very welcoming, uh, especially as someone like, like, there's not people that look like me where I, you know, where I work. Uh, and despite that, I just felt safe and a lot more safer than the classical world. Um, so I think that external uh, support system was what helped me because mm. I did have my breakdowns, but yeah. yeah. Uh, for kind of, I suppose, people who are new at a game audio, how would you recommend seeking out that sort of community that is so important? So this is where I'm very, very privileged. I was born and raised in Montreal, so automatically I have access to a game hub, a game community, it was already there. Uh, so if you are from a city that has a game hub, then awesome, get involved. If not, um, I got most of my jobs, especially currently through Twitter. Uh, there's a very nice, I'm not saying that Twitter's a job thing and you should just apply left and right or whatever. I'm just saying that's a nice community. And um, if you can't get that in-person community, well, there's an online option. And I use, yeah, I, I felt like my, I talk a lot about Montreal and Quebec City, but um, I have a big community online as well. Um, the game audio Slack, uh, there's just a lot of folks there that, that are there, yeah. 
Um, so after Mini Maker, you worked. I mean, I didn't realize you worked on Vanbo, which I'm really oh, looking forward yay, to. Thank I you. love any game about food, but particularly <laughs> so that one. Good. Looks so beautiful. Um, what were the lessons you've kind of learnt from Mini Maker that you've then taken to other projects? Communication, for sure. I learned how to, and again, it wasn't a team doing anything. It was more like I don't feel like I can talk. Um, I mean, I'm a very shy person. Uh, this is very odd, uh, <laughs> but I'm an introvert. Um, but communication was a big one, and I kind of learned that if I don't do it now, it's going to hurt me later. Um, so might as well just do it now. Hmm. Uh, I think that's great advice. <laughs> also, your introversion does not show on stage. This you, is like fake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, thank you for <laughs> this. So, is so fake. Like I'm just gonna go crawl somewhere. Later. Make a thing. <laughs> fake it till you make it. I I, okay, so fake it till you make it. Like I, I love that. I mean, that's that's literally me. Whether it be classical piano, like you know, I wasn't the child that started piano lessons at five. Uh, we didn't have a piano. I used to, used to go to my music school to practice. Like it was a hellhole, but you wouldn't know. Mm. Um, but yeah, fake it till you make it is a, is a really good model. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you.